Hey guys, this is The Last Raven here. I'm doing a bit of a reboot for the modding tutorial series that I was doing originally. I just want to toss out that first video. We're going to kind of start from scratch, build from the ground up. This first video, I do just kind of want to show what software we're going to be using and what files we're going to be messing with. I don't want to get into any modding right now. We'll do that in the next video. For now, I just kind of want to set us up for success. So what we're going to need first is a text editor. I use Sublime Text Editor, but you know you can use whatever you like. You can even use Notepad if you want. Sublime just has a couple of features that I like make my life easier. What we're going to do first is we're going to go into the game's files. And if you look, um, we're going to be in Steam, Steam Apps Common. I do have Caves of Code through Steam. I do recommend pinning either the Common folder or Caves of Cuds folder itself to your quick access bar because it's going to make your life a hundred times easier when you've got to do modding and get into the game's files. So we're going to go into Caves of Code, COQ Data. Streaming Assets, Base. Now, in Base, we're going to see a list of files. Now, 95% of these we're actually not going to touch. We're only going to be using a handful. First things first, I do want to show you guys, for those who don't know, how to set your default program. Now, for example, if you downloaded Sublime Text Editor, and that's not going to be your default text editor here. So what we're going to do is, let's say, let's select genotypes.xml. For me, it's already set as default, but if for you guys, if you want to set it, we're going to go into Open With, choose another app, and it's obviously not going to be here at the top, but you're going to scroll. If it's not there, you can actually go and look for another app on the PC. It'll pull up your window. Select whatever software you're using and select the little checkbox to always use that software. That'll allow you to, you know, not have to right-click and do open with Sublime Text or whatever thing every single time. Now, the files that we're going to be using here are all pretty instinctively named, like mutations.xml has stuff for mutations. Same with skills.xml. It's pretty simple. Uh, genotypes.xml is actually true kin and of mutants. It's the, like, overarching classes. And then subtypes.xml is the subclasses of both Truekin and Mutants. They're all in one file. The file I do want to show you while we're here, though, is objectblueprints.xml. Now, Object Blueprints is pretty huge. It's over 30,000 lines, and there's a whole lot of stuff in here. What it is is basically the definitions for each of these objects that are going to be present in the game world, whether it's a gun or an item or a, a wall section. It doesn't really matter. Now, while we're here, I do want to show you, for example, with the search feature, if we hit Control f we can actually search stuff up. Uh, instead of having to pull up the, the search bar manually, you can just hit Control f and one of the features I do want to show you while we're here is over on the right, we'll see these little white boxes. Those are actually instances of my search that are found in the little preview on the side. And the box that pops up here shows me what section of the file I'm actually looking at in this window. So those are both two useful things that I like. Um, it makes it easier to find stuff. You can actually see there's one instance of it all the way up here, for example. You can also use F3 and shift F3 to go to the next and the, pre and the previous instance of your search query. There's also some modifiers that you can use down here, like case sensitive or the whole word or search in selection. Those are all things you know, you'll want to get familiar with. It'll help you out and you know, save you a lot of time when you've got to do some tedious stuff. You also have control H to replace. Now with uh, replace, we're also going to see a new modifier down here, which is preserve case. That just makes it so that whatever word that you're replacing, the word that you are replacing it with will keep the same upper or lower case for each individual character. Can be useful sometimes. I don't use it a ton, but when I do need it, I am glad it's there. The other thing I do want to show you guys is what we're going to be using for scripting. Now, for scripting, you'll need anything that can decompile C Sharp. I, used to, I like to use .peek, it's by JetBrains, and it's free, which is perhaps the most important part, just like Sublime Text Editor. Now, when you first download and open up .peek, you are not going to have Assembly C Sharp here. You're actually going to have a bunch of other, other files that we won't need. If you right-click them and do Remove from Item from List, you'll get rid of them. To get Assembly C Sharp, which is what we need, we'll just do File, Open, 
We're going to go back to the game's files. And instead of going to streaming assets like before, we're going to go into managed. And it'll be right here as the second item. Now, you just double click that and it'll pop up over here. You can click the little arrow to expand it. And same as in streaming assets base, 95% of this stuff we're not going to touch. So don't get overwhelmed when you first open it. What we're going to use is mostly like xrl.world.parts.mutation. You know, they're pretty instinctively named. You can actually also use the search function up here, and you can search not only by the file name, but also by the contents. So if I search for Flaming Hands, we'll see not only, hey, here's the mutation Flaming Hands, but you can see that, for example, Rocket Skates actually has in its code somewhere an instance of the words Flaming Hands. So that can be a useful feature sometimes, not like being able to search not only by the file name, but actually the contents. When we do want, I do want to show you guys quick. When we want to do a scripting change, you won't change it in here. You can't really. What we're going to actually do is, I'm just going to show you. For an example, we'll go back into the Caves of Cud files. We'll actually show you how to make a mod and where to actually put it next time. But for now, I'm just going to make it here. What you would do, create a new text document. You're not actually going to leave it as a text document. But if I wanted to mod, say, Flaming Hands, you want to type it exactly as it is in .peak, like the file name, and then do .cs. Yes, ignore that, it's a blank file anyway. You would open it up. All you gotta do, whoop, go into .peak. Let's open Flaming Hands. Copy that. Paste that. Save that. All you gotta do. Boom. Now you've got your base file that you can then mod. You can go ahead and delete this stuff if you want, leave it there. It doesn't really matter. It's just commented stuff that doesn't matter. So that's just kind of the intro of, you know, what's going on that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, that'll help set us up for success and get us ready for the next videos. I'll post some links in the descriptions and the description of the video for each of these pieces of software. That way you can find them easy. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll actually start going in doing some modding.